Yeah, Sebastian, um, it's, it's hard to keep count. Um, and uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think you've been world champion 10 times. Uh, I don't know myself. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> Uh, if I want to know, I check on Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> and I, well, from I checked on Wikipedia yeah, too. Okay, so you're right. And uh, yes, I might be in uh, seven World Gliding Championships mm -hmm. and three Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. And um, that's over a, a, not a huge period. It's, I think your first uh, World Championships that you won was in 2003. Yes, that's So right. you virtually won a World Championship every year. Yeah, there were some occasions that years. we, we were, I won uh, two competitions in a year yes uh, I had some years with three medals but never three goals <laughs> uh, it's difficult to prepare for the competition if we are in a new place like here I'm for the first time in Australia especially in Benalla because I was for three days in Queensland but it's not not enough uh, you need to be there in a competition year earlier to know the area Without this, uh, it's very difficult and you have to learn during the race. You have to learn from other pilots and, uh, and if the competition is not long enough, uh, it's very difficult. My observation, uh, Sebastian, is that you learn very quickly. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you'll find out very quickly what, what, uh, what happens. Um, but one thing I wonder about, uh, given what it takes to become world champion, and to, to year after year go to these competitions. It's enormous drive, enormous determination. And I just wonder how you uh, maintain that. What really drives you? I like to fly. I like the uh, competition itself, um, the con concurring and with other pilots. Um, and as I was successful, it gives me, um, it's satisfying. So that's probably why I've been flying so, for so long and so many competitions. And. Uh, at some point, maybe two years ago, I decided to do something else and uh, that's why I organized a trip with the glider to Himalayas, to Nepal. Uh, this year uh, I flew in Caucasus, in, um, in Russia, and it was quite challenging because of the bad weather, a lot of thunderstorms and uh, overcast uh, with clouds uh, in uh, September. and. Uh, this is something uh, that I would like to do more, but unfortunately I don't have enough money to do it. And uh, I, I think my ultimate target would be to fly over Antarctica. <laughs> that is right, okay. You are finding new challenges and I guess there's a lot of scope for uh, uh, different challenges. Yeah, this is a lot of places that's, uh, that are fantastic for flying gliders and nobody even tried to do the, this. Uh, for example, Central South Asia is uh, the place that usually nobody flew. There are, there are paragliders flying in Tianshan Mountains, in, uh, in Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, but nobody saw a glider there. <laughs> That's interesting also. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, most people have read your book, uh, Sky Full of Heat. In fact, mm -hmm. today was a, a sky full of heat, <laughs> heat yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, they're, they're learning from this book and they're <laughs> more and more hard to beat. <laughs> no. You're giving your secrets away. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was stupid. <laughs> but the first half of the book was um, biographical. Mm -hmm. And um, and in that, uh, it, it gave a, a very good story about how you learned to become competitive through sailing. And, uh, I, I should write a few more pages. <laughs> yes, yeah. So there's a lot of experience with that. And what and what did you transfer? Especially there was quite a lot of hardship with that. I particularly remember about how cold you were, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and how you. But you you kept on. Uh, you were so competitive. You you put up with those very difficult conditions. Um, how, how have you transferred that sort of determination? Because it can be quite hard. It's lo it's a harsh sport, mm -hmm. competitive mm -hmm. gliding, and there's lots of ups and downs. How do you deal with that? Uh, hardships. Uh, for example, here I tried to do it as hard as I could during the uh, practice period. I, we came here without a trailer, without a crew. Uh, now it's uh, the situation has changed. <laughs> we have everything. We are in a comfortable situation. But um, I think the goal is. Uh, if you have a goal and a good motivation, you can overcome all of this. Uh, the hardships. 
it's it's never easy for us you know we are not the richest country in the world and uh, we these gliders you see here this is all polish good gliders mm. there's very few other gliders that are flying for private persons or in the clubs uh, ISG 29 or the Anas they are only two uh, we have uh, also two discuses and that's all mm. no other glider is in, flying in Poland so they are all going from the place to place and this year for example I had a very difficult uh, practice because uh, I never had a chance to fly a competitive glider for myself in Poland and they were all always occupied they were flying in a competition so mm. preparing for a Grand Prix uh, was especially difficult for me in South Africa because uh, I didn't have a single flight with the JS1 mm. so that's a problem <laughs> mm. so um, while you're an exceptional pilot and in fact um, there's quite a few exceptional pilots on the, on the yeah, Polish yeah, team uh, yeah and also in this field here, yeah, there's this, a lot of them. That's <laughs> true. Um, but also the glider is important and um, this this is your baby. You've been flying this glider in quite I a hate few... this glider. You hate oh, this glider. Yes. <laughs> and yes, why is that? <laughs> uh, this, this is a lady, you know, it, it, it has humours. <laughs> <laughs> and and why, what, what, what do, why do you hate it? What's wrong with it? Uh, you do very well in it. <laughs> yeah, the, it, the performance is nice. Yeah. But, um, uh, it should be treated as a prototype, and this is the first one. This is the prototype exactly. Right. Uh, the uh, XB001. Uh, so um, the other one is a little bit better, but we have always problems with these gliders. And uh, I hope the new uh, new factory, because uh, another factory t took over this project, and they will improve the glider, and we will have a normal glider. But as far as now, it's it's very difficult. <laughs> Yeah, and you're talking about more for handling, like uh, taking off and landing, or you say it performs no, really well? No, it flies well, well. Yeah. it flies well, but yeah. there are some problems that you may break it in every occasion. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yeah, it's quite fragile. Yes, it's fragile, mm. you, can, you may break a tail, you may just uh, bump on a few stones and uh, uh, lose uh, a tail wheel. Or, or break a um, water tank. There's a lot of problems. With and what do you think about how it runs with other gliders in the class? And you've had a chance, uh, maybe, to to see how it it's runs with the better. new. What it's about the new? Better. Yes. We flew together with uh, Yonkers. Yes. And we are happy about it because uh, we won. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a completely new glider. Uh, everybody was a little bit afraid about it, <laughs> but today we won it yes. with them. And uh, it seems that uh, differences are, if there are some differences they're very small yes okay so, so we are happy about it a bit of a test like comparison here you have yes some maybe some chance against it and you have other opportunities to make those comparisons mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you mentioned that um, you haven't had a great op uh, uh, chance to uh, sample the soaring conditions in Australia no. you've only had a few days when you came to Lake Keepert and that was up um, towards Queensland northern New mm -hmm. South Wales mm -hmm. no it was not there was no weather absolutely no weather there mm -hmm. so this is your really your first opportunity mm -hmm. in the little time you've been here you've seen quite a, a range of mm -hmm. conditions we took all days uh, we flew six days in a row so tomorrow we probably don't fly because we are tired now yeah. and we don't want to be tired on the beginning of the competitions and uh, and that was I, th I hope it was enough I hope it was enough we, we had difficult weathers in in the mountains we didn't see good weather in the mountains but uh, I think we have seen the pattern and you can see uh, it can be very hot in the high 30s and it's, and it's quite uh, uh, dry um, harsh heat here mm -hmm. and that could be over quite a period of time you actually look quite fit do you, you already you keep, <laughs> yes you keep quite fit do you um, I don't complain either if it's hot yeah uh, and I during these two weeks I tried to accommodate to this heat and uh, we've been running in the forests here and uh, practicing for, to, to, to be in a good fit for the competition. Okay, so you do regular exercise yes, in preparation. Yeah. There's a beautiful path in the forest here, in the park, yeah. and uh, I met only one person in this forest. Guess who it was? I can't. It was a French pilot, ah. <laughs> jogging. Yes. No, the people were jogging <laughs> yeah. because it was probably too hot. Yeah, yes, okay, yeah. So you'll get used to the yeah. being in we the heat. trying to prepare it this way. Thank you very much. I was wondering, though, uh, yeah, anything? we've never seen a Diana 2 in Australia before. You I mean, saw it. Uh, it was in 2000, 
Uh, the Diana was here in two, the, the, pro, uh, the number three was bought by Hanna Zaidova in. I, I, I can't reckon which year it is. Uh, but I think it was 2007. I went to New Zealand with this one. Yeah. And she was here with, in Australia mm, with the number uh, number three. This is number four. <laughs> and um, but unfortunately, they had problems with this glider, and they returned it back to Europe, and she didn't fly anymore. So, but I flew with this number three after some just a few modifications because the problem was with the protruding air brakes and when it was hot mm. they were protruding a little bit okay and uh, so they didn't um, they were not able to adjust it properly so they sent it back to factory and they sold it back uh, I, I was flying that model because other people bought it and I have been flying this one that one in competitions and it, it, now it's sold to the United States. <laughs> so I guess um, one, one of the concerns is because it's it's really a right on, right on the edge design wise isn't it and so the the secret of this glider yeah. is a perfect wing, wing. Yeah okay. The fuselage is not optimal but uh, the wing is very good. Uh, if you have a look at this uh, there's no single straight line uh, it's it's quite twisted, elliptical. It's twisted, it's mm. uh, curved. There's no single straight line in this one. Mm. If you look at the very modern gliders, the Yonkers airplanes, they try to be mm, very close to it, but uh, they are straight lines. Mm. <laughs> and this is the model from uh, 2005. So it's already 10 years old. Mm. And is it um, it's particularly good for climbing and feel this glider? What's its it, strength? It uh, uh, it takes more water. Um, What's the sort wing, of, yeah. uh, the wing loading is slightly bigger than, uh, for example, um, Ventus. I don't know about the Yonkers airplanes uh, because 60. they oh they go to 16. We have 57. So it's more or less the same as the SG-29 mm -hmm. and uh, uh, because the wing is small, uh, the elongation is a little better and um, the lift coefficient is very good. So you may fly slowly with this heavy loading. Mm. You may slow down to about 95 in thermal. Okay. Of course, we don't fly so slow because yeah. uh, it sinks them. But uh, if you want to take a very narrow ter thermal in the mountains, for example, mm. uh, it's a good glider mm. because you have a bigger margin to stall. Mm. You fly, for example, 110 kilometers per hour, and the other gliders are on the edge of the stall, and this glider can still pull up. Wow. So in, in this way it's better, but uh, in the other way the, the handling of, of uh, the stick is not so good. <laughs> right, <laughs> So Side you have stick. to be very yeah. well trained to fly it. Yeah. Yeah. Of course if you fly without water or you fly in a good conditions cross country, it's for every pilot. But if you want to take the edge of this, uh, you have to train a lot. Yeah. You know, I think you're going to really enjoy this competition. I hope so. <laughs> well, you just love being in the air and I think you're going to, going to fly nearly every single day knowing this site. So you might have a couple of days for a rest day, but you have a lot of hours in the air with long days. Yes. I hope the competition director will not forget that we are not here to make record flights, yeah. but we are here to compete because uh, it's very dangerous for pilots. Even when the pilots will be fatigued, mm. they will be tired. With the heat as well. With the heat, with long tasks, uh, then accidents will happen. Yeah, it could we be a little like Uvalde had the very long days. Yeah, and then we had accident. The yeah, last day. yeah. After long tasks, we had always accidents. Mm. I hope they will not uh, exaggerate because it's good enough for 500, 600. We don't need to fly 1,000 <laughs> mm, mm. or 700. It's. Uh, I hope they will not ex uh, exaggerate because. Yeah. Uh, uh, the scoring, uh, if we fly very long tasks, 
even if somebody makes a mistake, the scoring then there is very little differences. Mm -hmm. If we fly shorter tasks, scoring is uh, differences in scoring are higher. Mm. And in the other hand, it's much more fun to fly fast, shorter tasks than to fly very, very long days and mm. day after day. But, but I, I'm afraid this is possible here. <laughs> and uh, today would be a good example of a good yeah. sort of task because you all came back uh, about 6:30. Started, yeah, but the day started late. Yes. It didn't start early. At 2:30, we had uh, decent lifts uh, before was not so good and in the area of the task of the first turn point we didn't have any turns at all mm. at that time so we had to wait so if the day was uh, very long uh, it would not be probably a short task <laughs> because it would we would have to fly in a bad weather on the beginning of course the, the end of the day is much faster but it's now closing, you see. Mm, it so, is. So, mm. Yeah, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Mm. So, maybe it was possible to fly 100 kilometers more, but it would be a little bit too much. Yeah, it seems like it was a well-set task today. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, I'm very happy about it. It yeah. was a good task for a day. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks again. Thank you very much. Really enjoyed uh, speaking with you, and we'll catch up again later. See you later. Okay, thank <laughs> you. Bye. Bye-bye.